September I had my 16th birthday and like what most people seem to do when they hit this milestone my mum drove me to the RTA and I sat the driver's knowledge test and not long after I received my learner's license and might I add I looked pretty cool in my picture khaki uniform and all unfortunately for me my parents are still to this very day reluctant to have me driving on the road Though I do agree with them in the fact that being able to drive is a massive responsibility. But for some strange reason, society trusts us teenagers to be driving on its highways at a steady 90 kilometers per hour as we embark on this step forward into adulthood. Despite this exciting new door unlocked in our ad adolescent lives, there are also some doors for me and you which remain shut. As a 16-year-old girl, if I'm old, old enough to make informed decisions about my body and get behind the wheel of a car, then I don't see why I shouldn't be given the choice to vote if I want to, and the power to contribute to changes in policies and make a difference in society. Now, don't worry, I'm not here to discuss politics, but what I'm trying to get at is that we young people don't need to wait until we're older to make a difference. There is no age limit for us to become activists in our community. Society has these rules in place that seem to dictate what we can and can't do, with so many people, including some of my friends, feeling disempowered to engage with our passions because they feel that young people like ourselves, trapped in our bubbles of teenagehood, have a lower capacity to make meaningful decisions and help others in what seems to be a kind of power play in the form of age. But this is simply not the case, and I'm here to tell you why. From personal experience, I've seen how volunteering can make a significant imp impact on myself and my world. Ever since I began volunteering, I've seen how it can shape an outlook. Tuesday afternoon is the highlight of my week. Now, don't get me wrong, I love weekends, especially my Sunday morning sleep-in. But volunteering at the Holdsworth Centre on a Tuesday has allowed me to experience things that algebra or analysing a metaphor could never teach me. For the past year, I've been helping out at an after-school program for children with intellectual and some physical disabilities, uh, such as mild to more severe levels of autism and Down syndrome. The other volunteers and I spend the afternoon interacting with the kids and we take part in so many different activities. We've had a yoga instructor come in and teach us the tree pose all the way through to the cooling breath, which I've actually found quite useful when I'm stressing in exam week. Although it can be hard at times to get the kids to focus, we all enjoy our time together nonetheless. This term, the primary kids are doing some arts and crafts and in fact, we just painted a giant Australia which looks quite abstract, though we did our best anyways. And with the teenagers in the group, we're learning some valuable basic life skills, such as cooking, shopping, and simple maths. And these kinds of abilities will be so useful when they become adults and leave school. One of my favorite moments was a few weeks ago. One of the boys was quite distressed and unhappy, so I approached him to try and help. This boy is non-verbal, non and when I went over, he showed me his new app on his iPod. He'd been working hard with his speech therapist to use this app as a new way of communication. He clicked on the box which said, I want, and then he clicked on the box which said, people, and finally tapped on the picture of his mum as the sound of, I want mum, followed. It was pretty incredible to see how he'd learnt this new way of communicating something that I myself had never seen before and allowed me to understand him through more than just his movements and gestures for the first time. And it's quite amazing to know that he's learning how to form so many more sentences that convey his needs, which might not be heard otherwise through his physical actions. It's experiences like this that make volunteering so special. My friends often ask me, what motivates me to do community service? 
for some, community service can be seen as a bit of a chore and something that you have to do 26 hours of for Duke of Ed requirements. They say, why spend your time after double maths and double English volunteering when you could be taking a nice long nap, hang out at Westfield, or even better, babysit your next door neighbor for a couple of hours and actually get paid? But volunteering is different. It's not about money and it shouldn't be measured that way. The intrinsic value of volunteering is priceless. I began with the mindset that I would teach and help these kids, but didn't realize how much they would teach me. Community service, no matter how long you do it for, is something that I believe all young people deserve to experience and something that I feel so strongly about. As teenagers, it's easy to have the mindset that the world revolves around us the fancy term for it being egocentric. It's important that we do take a step back and have time to reflect and become aware that this insular bubble that we might find ourselves trapped in needs to be broken. Quite literally, as my sister is fond of telling me, Maddie, the world does not revolve around you. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that teenagers are bad people, but we should at times focus our thoughts elsewhere and think about what power we have as individuals and how we can use it positively. I experienced this recently when I visited the Mondokiri province in Cambodia, volunteering to teach English at a primary school. Comparing the opportunities between there and here was astounding, and it really brought home how lucky I am to have the opportunities that I might have otherwise taken for granted. Not only was it a lot of fun, but it was also extremely rewarding. One particular girl remained behind every class because she wanted to learn more. And I taught them the song, If You're Happy and You Know It, and I'll never forget the way their faces lit up as they sang and we all clapped our hands. Now, not everyone has to travel to Cambodia. That's just one opportunity I had. Volunteering can take so many different forms. I have a friend that volunteers at an after-school care because she loves working with children and is considering studying education. If you're passionate about sport and get excited by being in that environment, you might want to help coach a junior netball team. If you love music, you can exert that love for it and play a couple of pieces once a week at an elderly home or teach them how to play the piano and make them just that bit more happy and engaged. My advice to you all is to discover what you're passionate about and find an opportunity to turn your passion into action. What makes you excited? What do you look forward to? What do you love and perhaps want to spend the rest of your life doing? A bonus is that we can find like-minded people and this contributes to the incredible culture of volunteerism as we can engage together with the passions we all share. For example, I recently got involved in another project called Realize, which I found out through my fellow volunteers at the Holdsworth Centre. We've developed a film festival where students from all around the world can enter movies that, have made si that they've made about cyberbullying to spread awareness about this issue that affects one in four young Australians. We've even had entries from as far away as Albania, which I think is pretty incredible, and it's just one example of how we can use volunteering to make a difference and take positive action about things that are important to us. And if you might not know what that is, volunteering can help you discover your passions and perhaps even your future career too. That's what happened to me. Now, I didn't have a magical light bulb moment. I originally got involved because of Duke of Ed. But if I'd never immersed myself into volunteering, I would have never discovered my passion for helping others in unfamiliar circumstances. I know that in the future, whatever career path I choose, I will never gain the same sense of fulfillment and reward unless I'm working with people. And I think that at this later stage in my schooling life, volunteering has helped me decide what I might like to study at university. And for me, I think being a paediatrician would be the best way to continue helping other people and spend time with children. And I know that some of the other volunteers have similar plans to work with children as speech pathologists and teachers continuing this change effect. 
every one of us here has the capacity to make a positive difference. And while my small involvement of two hours a week might not be seen on a world-changing phenomenon scale, I believe that it helps you develop skills that you yourself may not have known that you possessed. I know that I had the capacity to evoke change as a 16-year-old girl, even if it is on a small scale, and the gratification as well as the social progress that I've observed makes me want to share my experience with as many young people as I can, one 16-year-old to another. What seems like something small to us can make the biggest difference in the lives of others, and that's something that I think we need to realise. It's a reality that young people are the future, and I believe the best way to engage in our societies is by immersing ourselves into the culture of volunteerism. It's the underpinning of our community. Volunteering is democratic. Each day can be seen as an active vote towards what we think the world should look like. Tomorrow is ours, and we need to understand the society that we live in. Gandhi said, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. And I couldn't agree more. However, I think my volunteer supervisor put it best when he reminds me to be humble, be empathetic, and be kind to everyone. I ask you all, have a think about what matters to you. How do you want to see your future? What are your passions? Don't wait to be an activist for what you believe in and take the opportunity now. Research the causes that are important to you. Look at organisations that are lacking in help. Consider what skills you have to offer, what you might like to learn. From Meals on Wheels to NGOs, homes for the elderly, churches, animal shelters, art galleries and museums, I'm sure there are some opportunities that may have never crossed your mind. We are the future of the world that we live in, and Volunteering can help us shape that world and make it what we want to see. It's time that young people feel empowered to do what we're all capable of doing, making a real difference. Thank you.